and welcome to the lunch counter. Today we're joined by Ward Wilson, who is an acupuncturist, and Lisa Kilgore, who is a registered holistic nutritionist. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the challenges, perhaps, uh, in getting people to understand what alternative medicine is or isn't. And uh, Ward, first let's talk a little bit about uh, your credentials, um, how you kind of came to be an acupuncturist, I guess. Yeah, not the traditional way. I uh, got hit by a drinking driver. I spent five years in the spinal rehab, learned to be using my limbs again, we'll say, and then uh, my Kung Fu instructor took me to a natural therapy class where they magically put me back together. I was somewhat changed by that experience, and uh, ever since then I've just been taking courses. I started off getting a bunch of diplomas in various kinesiologies, which is kind of like a physio with just uses their hands. And then I stumbled across an acupuncturist, a nice little old lady lives in the mountains named Elizabeth, my mentor. And she said, I need an apprentice. So I started apprenticing in acupuncture. And then um, the laws came in. The BC government changed the laws. I had to go to school, get a degree in Chinese medicine, and take a bunch of terrible exams, which were very difficult. And uh, yeah, now I have a clinic and practice as a registered acupuncturist. And what about you, Lisa? I, I, I know a little bit about your story. <laughs> uh, about 10 years ago, my diet was atrocious. It was entirely Fruit Loops and white flour. And not surprisingly, I felt horrible. Uh, my brain was foggy. Uh, my skin was a mess. Um, I had digestive issues and blood sugar problems. And I was 25, but would forget where I was going half the time. I'd be on the subway in Toronto and have no idea where I was or where I was going and have to suddenly rethink everything about that day just to figure out where I was. I knew there was something wrong and I'd had all the tests done and nothing was actually physically wrong with me. Um, so I needed to change and so I started changing my diet very slowly because I'm really stubborn and I'm very slow and over time I managed to change my diet from that highly processed diet to a whole food diet and that inspired me to help other people. So I went back to school, became a registered holistic nutritionist um, and that's what I do now and I, I work with clients to create this change. I've yet to work with a diet as bad as mine used to be and I yet to work with anybody as stubborn as I am. So we've kind of been uh, chatting a bit off camera and there's so much that I, I want to ask you guys. But, but I think kind of the first question that I always wonder about um, now considering that uh, I do acupuncture now and after meeting you, I, I really do try and eat better. Mm -hmm. Why people are sometimes a bit adverse to trying something that's less than conventional and, it, and it's funny that we would consider a nutritionist even to be something less than conventional. I think it's because it's difficult. Um, you have to do it yourself. Every day we choose the food we put into our bodies and those, that food creates our cells and creates our health. Um, but it's a lot easier to not cut up those vegetables or not to uh, make that nice breakfast and it's easier to take a pill. And we are a culture where our time is limited, our stress is high, and it just, it's, it doesn't become a priority. Um, but what I see in my clients and what I've seen in myself is that when you make it a priority, you have time and energy to do other things. So it actually becomes easier, but that first step, it's really hard. It's really, really hard. Yeah, the barrier to entry. Before I got into alternative therapies, I was a cutthroat businessman mm -hmm. in the States. And we spent a lot of money on advertising, and I can guarantee you if I take a bunch of granola crunch and hippies and put enough money into advertising and make them eat Cheerios all day long. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it, like it's this barrier to entry, you know, it's that understanding that the advertisers, just because they think, um, you know, this cereal box X has this and that. Like, like they did a great study, CBC did a great study, um, omega-3 in uh, yogurt. You need 54 jars mm -hmm. of this yogurt to have one little pill of omega-3. So, but people yeah. will tell you to this day, like we'll have people every day say, mm -hmm. my, I'm having omega-3, I'm having this yogurt and it's yeah. got omega-3 they're not so it's this barrier to entry is education mm -hmm. and the pervasive uh, wonderful powers of marketing and do you, do you think sorry Lisa do you, do you think that applies to um, your prof profession do we call being an acupuncturist mm -hmm. a profession do you, do you think it's just getting um, the education going that that it's okay to try something different how do you mean? So um, well, with the, because I, I think some people kind of, um, you know, in air quotes, poo-poo um, acupuncture a little oh, bit. Oh, mm -hmm. and I'm one of them. I remember when I first got exposed, I don't know if I can say this word, when I first got exposed to natural therapies, I looked to my Kung Fu instructor who is in town, and I said, what the blank, 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 you got us doing here? I thought he was just a nut. And 
generally we come to people like us through desperation. Mm -hmm. uh, we have tried everybody, and it's the end of the road, and somebody at a dinner party said, you tried the quack down the street, you know. And, and they come in, and they're stunned when we show that, you know, nutrition is the oldest form of medicine mm -hmm. in the planet. Uh, and, you know, Chinese medicine has documented history of 3,000 years. It's not, it's not a quack. I mean, I, had a, I have a doctor in town that sends people to me, and I have a doctor in town that tells people if they see me, he'll kill them. Like, <laughs> it's so, you know, to say acupuncture and holistic mm -hmm. nutrition is a quack, or flick, it, it's just, uh, you missed, that bus is long gone, folks. Mm -hmm. There's more MDs in Kelowna who are trained in acupuncture than acupuncturists in Kelowna. My old GP, I don't want to say his name, he'll be embarrassed. <laughs> he works at the hospital full time now, but he's trained in acupuncture. Mm -hmm. So sure, um, it's tough to make that hop. The other problem is, it doesn't matter what profession you're in, there are lousy acupuncturists, like there's lousy car mechanics. Mm -hmm. So if you go to a lousy car mechanic, you, what do you do? You leave your car in the garage for the rest of your life? You find a better mechanic. Mm -hmm. It's the same with every profession, whether it's acupuncture, I mean, I can't tell you how many, you know, I've read a bunch of your blogs, they're fantastic. You actually have it figured out. There's a ton of nutritionists that wouldn't know a carrot from a, you know, a niacin pill. I mean, it's crazy, right? And it's so different than my job. Yeah. Not all of us put them in backwards, but, mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, mm -hmm. so um, one of the things we were talking about uh, before we went on camera was uh, the buying of things over the counter, mm -hmm. herbs being one of them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have no problem admitting that, that I take an herb to kind of quiet my brain at night called valerian. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you guys think of people self-prescribing, self-dosing? Um, it, it's over the counter, it's gotta be okay. I'm a nutritionist, so um, I work in food, I don't work in herbs. I'm not trained in herbology, and you need to be trained in herbology. These, these are medicines. Um, I won't self-prescribe myself herbs. I won't prescribe a herb for my, my clients. You need to go to somebody like Ward who's been trained in herbology, who actually understands how these herbs interact with the body. And that's really important because they can be incredibly healing. But just like the wrong medication, they can also be quite toxic. I learned herbal medicine from a guy in Vancouver named Mac Tak Chow. I've been practicing about 55 years. The guy's a, a living genius. And I remember when I was training with him in about uh, late 90s, um, they had just banned Cava Cava, which is like a Valerian, really. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. That was beautiful stuff. Oh, yeah. And anyway, he was really upset because the guy who, there was a fellow that died from it in Ontario, and uh, he was on, he was tripling his uh, prescribed liver medication. He died of liver failure. It wasn't the Cava Cava. But they banned it. He was also drinking a gallon of Cava a day. Uh, he worked out how much that was. He says it's 54 bowls of rice. If you eat 54 bowls of rice, you're going to die too. You deserve mm -hmm. it. A friend of mine works in the biggest vitamin store in the valley. Uh, he says 30 minutes after Dr. Oz shows over, they know mm -hmm. what it was about because everyone's gone to buy Absolutely. all the vitamins. Yep. What people miss is critical diagnostic differentiation. Mm -hmm. They'll say, I have a runny nose and I have a fever. I must have a cold. Now, you could have anything. You could have food poisoning, a bug bite. You could have malaria for all we know. You have a gut, a gut imbalance. You could have a gut imbalance. <laughs> so you have to be, go see somebody. Mm -hmm. And don't see someone who's making their living on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and you actually said uh, a word that, that's going to lead me into our next question after the break, and mm -hmm. that's the word gut, mm -hmm. because we will talk about the North American gut. So stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 